Here's how you can build a masonry grid in less than 10 lines of CSS. So, to understand this solution to the masonry grid, you have to keep in mind that we are using the CSS column layout. And the three properties that we are going to use from it are the column width, the column count, and the column gap. So, what the column width does is it allows us to specify the minimum width we want for each column. So you can imagine that if we set the minimum width to HREM, then every single one of this column needs to have at least HREM. So if we don't have enough space for three columns to have HREM, we will only have two. And you will see that that's what happens if we reduce the width of our viewport. Right, and if we keep expanding it, you'll see that it will expand to try to fit as many columns that have at least a RAM. The other property we need to understand is the column count. And what the column count lets us do is specify the number of columns we want. If we set it to auto, in this context, it means that we want the column width to determine the number of columns we want. Auto is actually the default value for column count, so we don't need to explicitly define it, so I'll just remove it from the rule set. Another property we use is the column gap. And what the column gap does is specify the distance between columns. So if we set the column gap to one pixel, you will see that the distance between the columns will reduce. But as you can see, the vertical distance between the items didn't reduce. And that's because, as I said before, we are using the column layout. And the column layout only allows us to specify the distance between the columns. So to solve this issue, we actually have to target the children of the columns. So in this case, we have to target that margin bottom, and we need to set it also to one pixel. And now you can see that the distance between the elements is the same both vertically and horizontally. Now, another property we need to keep in mind is the break inside, and we set its value to avoid. And what this does is it makes it so that no element can ever be split across different columns. So let's see how we are actually using the masonry grid in our HTML. As you might have noticed from the CSS, we are using CSS properties. And the really cool thing about using CSS properties is that it allows us to reuse our CSS layouts in different places without actually having to change the CSS. So in this case, we use CSS properties to specify the different uh, minimum widths that we want to allow for, uh, allow for the columns. So if we change here HRAM to 2RAM, you'll see that the number of columns we have will actually increase. And we also allow the gap to be configurable. So if we change the gap space from 0.5 RAM to 1 RAM, you'll see that the vertical space between elements and the horizontal space will increase to one RAM. This is a simple solution, but it has some drawbacks. And the major one is the flow of the elements. Here, the elements flow from top to bottom instead of the usual left to right. And that's pretty obvious when we start tabbing over the elements in our masonry grid. The issue with this is that most users don't expect focus to go from top to bottom. They expect it to go from left to right. This might bring accessibility concerns in your particular use case. So please take that into consideration before going with this solution. If you can choose this solution because of accessibility concerns, I suggest you use a third party library. A very good one is this one. And I leave the link to it in the description. Now, if for some reason you also can't use a third-party library, before trying to implement a fully-fledged masonry grid, I suggest you actually talk with your designer and try to see if you can use a normal grid instead of a masonry one. In many situations, a normal grid will bring as much value as a masonry grid to the user. So the cost of implementing a masonry grid isn't actually worth it.